Welcome back. Please help me welcome our next guest, Caitlin Locke, distant relative of mad scientist Giovanni Aldini. Caitlin, help the audience and me get to know Giovanni Aldini a little better with some basic facts about what he did. Well, Giovanni Aldini was born in 1762 in Bologna, Italy, and graduated in physics at the University of Bologna in 1782. He also became a professor of experimental physics at the university in 1798. He worked with electricity and electrical currents. Well, what sparked his interest in electricity? Aldini was the nephew of Luigi Galvini. Galvini was an anatomist, surgeon, physicist, and philosopher that discovered that applying an electrical current to frogs' legs made their legs twitch and move. Galvini, that name sounds familiar. It should, because galvanism is the theory of bioelectricity, which was formulated by him. It's the idea that electrical impulses that move muscles are carried by the fluid in the nerves. It's a theory that is still dis discussed to this day. Did Aldini continue Galvini's work? Oh, he definitely did. He amped up the audience with his traveling theatrical experiments at universities and medical schools. Traveling theatrical experiments? I thought scientists worked in a lab. Not Aldini. In the early 1800s, he applied a strong charge from a Leiden jar to a decapitated ox head. The, car, the ears twitched, the lips moved, and the eyes opened and closed. He also did these type of experiments to horses, cows, dogs, sheep. Well, at least he stuck to animals with those experiments. Sounds like it hurts a lot. Get it? Well, it's funny that you brought that up. He also did experiments on human cadavers. <gasps> what? Oh, yes. He was nicknamed the Corpse Reanimator for a reason. He's well known for an experiment in 1803. There was a man named George Forster who was hanged for murdering his wife and child. He was promptly taken to the Royal College of Surgeons for Aldini to experiment on in front of townspeople and medical professionals. Well, how about we show the audience that video that you showed the producers earlier? Warning, this is not for young eyes. Italian professor Giovanni Aldini has assembled a nervous audience, curious to discover what happens when the corpse is connected to a mysterious metal device. It's the beginning of the age of electricity. Aldini seems to bring Forster's corpse back to life with the power of electricity. He describes a whole series of, of responses. Responses, movements of the arms, movements of the legs, the lifting the body up, almost sitting up, the respiratory movements, facial movements. Aldini's audience is horrified. The man who procured the body actually dies of shock. Aldini has captured and harnessed the power of electricity in a battery device. He's put two different metals separated by a conductive layer of cloth soaked in salt water. An electrochemical reaction takes place, producing a powerful electrical current. It is still the basis of all batteries to this day. That guy actually looked like he was alive. It reminded me of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It's funny that you mentioned that. It's rumored that the story of Frankenstein is actually based on Aldini's life. So how does it make you feel to be related to such a madman? I found it quite shocking, but there were some methods to his madness. How could a guy that shocks the dead not be completely mad? As early as 1801, he discovered that he could cure individuals who suffer from schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and severe depression by applying electrical current to their heads. Is that something that is still used today? Yes, it actually is. The safer practice of electroconvulsive th therapy has a high success rate for treating people with severe mental illness. It is still very controversial. 
Well, Caitlin, you have quite the family tree to be looking back on. Thank you for being here to talk about Giovanni Aldini with us. Well, thank you for having me. And next time on Mad Discoveries in Your Family Tree, we will have our guest, Amy Nichol, relative of Stubbins Firth, who covered himself with blood, urine, and saliva from infected patients to prove that yellow fever was not contagious. Tune in!